Awesome, awesome. So now uh, let's talk about a question that came in related to financial force. And let me read this so you have some context here. So this question came in from Julianne. She's saying, please tell me what you know about financial force and the financial cloud. What do you know of the market demand? I have 20 years experience in the financial service in financial services for a Fortune 100 company and left 18 months ago and want to get back into another Fortune 100 financial services firm. I'm thinking having another cert, but specialized may be helpful. And so a few things are, uh, you know, she mentioned specifically a Fortune 100 financial services firm. And I'd known that I'd seen a stat at some point in the past that up, upwards of 90% of all Fortune 100 companies use Salesforce. And so I looked it up and it's now 99 of the top 100 companies in the Fortune 100 uh, use Salesforce. And so there's good odds if you're wanting to target a Fortune 100 company, you've got a 99% uh, shot that they're using Salesforce. And that's one reason why Salesforce is so important to your career is that it's relevant to these very large companies. As you go down the list in the Fortune 500, that percentage is somewhere upwards of 80 to 85% of all Fortune 500 companies use Salesforce. They're just a dominant market player in the CRM space. But specifically with Julianne's question, she's asking about Financial Force, which is an app on the App Exchange. I want to talk a little bit about what I know about that. But as I'm talking about financial services, I realize that in this group here, that a small percentage of you may have that background, but everyone has some sort of background unless you're fresh out of college or high school and have no business or career experience. And so I want you to think or relate to all the different resources that I'm getting ready to unfurl before you today related to financial force and financial cloud and relate that to your own industry. And I'm gonna give you some specific tools to help unearth uh, implementation guides for different clouds, how to discover which companies use a specific cloud solution so that you can then pivot and relate that to your own industry and your own background to identify various job leads and to be able to gauge market demand. So with that said, financial force, a few things that you can do. Uh, I've got a lot of thoughts on this. And so I'm going to be moving kind of quickly and uh, there will be a replay available. So just keep up as best you can and not worry about hitting all of these particular pages. But the first thing that I like to do when trying to gauge demand is to do a search on a few different websites related to jobs. And one that I like personally is Indeed. It tends to aggregate jobs from a lot of different places. And there are other websites like Career Builder and Monster and Dice, but uh, Indeed's a good one to kind of gauge the demand for something. So I did a search for Financial Force, which is an app on the App Exchange that lays on top of Salesforce and is specific for financial services. And it is a popular app out there. And I'll show you momentarily on the App Exchange what it looks like as well. Now, you, I did this search, though, and just left the location off. And there's 162 jobs. So that's a fair amount of mentions for a specific app on the App Exchange that right now there's 162 uh, open jobs. And one of the ones that's highlighted here is a financial force administrator. It's always insightful when you're thinking about going down a path of niching down in the Salesforce ecosystem to search for those specific apps or industries that you're looking at in order to see what are the other skills that are needed and technologies that are needed. And some of these will be Salesforce specific, but then you'll see other jobs that are maybe uh, titles that you hadn't thought about pursuing, such as account executive. This is in my area of Nashville, Tennessee, uh, an account executive with financial force. And then we see business analysts. This is something that is a good career path for those of you that may want to land somewhere between an admin or a developer, but want to get more involved with requirements gathering and interacting with uh, subject matter experts, for example. And, but there's all sorts of jobs related to financial force here. Now, another website is LinkedIn. And so here is a search for financial force. I just went to my own LinkedIn account, search for financial force. And then, you know, the main things that come up on LinkedIn just by default are the people that work for the company or the company information uh, itself. Now you've got to filter that down to jobs. And that's what I did here. And I kept the location just the United States. And there's 171 results here as well. 
And from here, why LinkedIn is important is that this will reveal to you any connections that you have that work for these different job postings. And I do encourage you to be active on LinkedIn very often and connecting with people and updating your profile very frequently because that is one of the main signals to recruiters and hiring managers. And one of the signals that LinkedIn causes you to rise above your competition is the recency of your updates. And so if you're weekly updating your LinkedIn profile, that's going to give you more visibility, even if it's just adding a period or a comma or just some small change. So with this, though, you see that there are a lot of jobs out there for financial force related experience. And so with Julianne's situation, she has experience with this particular app on the App Exchange and is wanting to specifically target a Fortune 100 company in the financial services space, okay? So as you can see, there's a lot of jobs to pursue here. Some of these are not necessarily uh, Fortune 100 companies, but let me show you if I can find my tab here. All right, so I did a search on App Exchange, and you can get to App Exchange by just typing in appexchange.com, which redirects you to appexchange.salesforce.com. And I did a search for the term financial. And the first thing that comes up is a list of 533 related financial apps. First and foremost, and at the top of the list is Financial Force, and it is accounting and financial management software. It's an app on the App Exchange. It is a paid solution and it has 146 reviews and an average of four and a half stars. So it is heavily used. And then also down here is a financial force professional services automation app. So they have multiple applications on App Exchange. And one of their primary competitors, based on just the number of reviews, is Sage Intact. Now you notice the cost here for some of these that are revealed. Uh, financial Force starts at $420 per company per month. Sage is $5,000 per user per year. So these prices will vary. Workday is another one, starting at $10,000 per company per year. All right. But there are all sorts of applications, but I want to show you and highlight uh, how you can niche down. Now, I'm talking specifically about financial services that may apply to you, but if your background is higher education or healthcare or whatever it may be, this still applies to you. So when you go to the app exchange, and let me just show you by the link that you want to really look at if you want to really start to target companies for whatever industry you're in is to go to the consultants tab. And here is where you will find what are known as implementation experts. So I clicked on consultants and then instead of selecting developers or job marketplace, which, oh, by the way, did you know there's a job marketplace on the app exchange? You might wanna explore that link as well. And that's more gig type work, not so much uh, long-term jobs, but a lot of one-off type of project work that you can find there in the job marketplace on App Exchange. But what I really want to hone in on are, are the consultants listings. And so here is where you click, and this reveals the different partners that belong to the Salesforce partner program. And you can filter down this list of partners by industry expertise. And I'm going to click show more. And along the, the left here, let's say you are wanting to target financial services. This will identify as I click financial services and apply filters. It narrows down the list of implementation experts and consultants to a smaller subset. You notice here some of the larger ones, Deloitte Digital, Capgemini, uh, Price Waterhouse Cooper, of course, and Accenture and IBM. And so these would be more of the Fortune 100 type of companies or Fortune 500 potentially. I'm not sure where they all rank out, but this will then show you, okay, if I want to pursue a job with an implementation company that does implementations in the financial services space for Salesforce, then I may want to target these specific companies, go to their websites, look for their job postings, and get them on your radar. And here's level two specialists. These are kind of mid-tier or small to medium business type of specialists as well. You can even further uh, narrow down your list depending on the, uh, if you're wanting to target a certain geography, you can go by country, 
and even choose a state or province. So for my own example, if I wanted to really hone in, let's see if there's any Tennessee related uh, financial services consultants. So it, there's a couple of level two specialist smaller companies and you can get more information on these. Now, why this matters is that I've now honed in on a few local to me companies that are partner companies. Now with the backdrop of this current pandemic that we have, all companies are trying to wean themselves off of partner companies and grow their in-house talent and to do less with third-party implementation experts and more with hiring their own people because it's cheaper that way. So what you can do is you can pursue jobs with some of these companies, but then as well, you could go to this company's website and look at their success stories and their list of clients. And that gives you a list of companies in your area then, at least in theory, or some of their customers. And you could then start to target or look and see if they have any job postings or perhaps try and connect with people on LinkedIn that work for these companies and say that you're someone local or you're someone that is pursuing Salesforce and you have certain background or experience in this industry and just make yourself as marketable as possible. So App Exchange is for more than just apps. That's the takeaway. It is also where you can find jobs in the job marketplace. And also you can gather intelligence related to industry specific specialists by geography and by industry. And that will help you to hone down your target. You can go with, try to get a job with a partner company and that that charting your path article that I put in the, the that I typed out the answer to previously that goes into how to target those partner companies and what different certifications matter to them. Now, uh, with Julie's question about financial force, I have used it a little bit. There is a lot of demand there, but what I want to talk about though is that uh, I think it's safer to look at Salesforce's own solutions now rather than being solely reliant on a app on the app exchange like a financial force. I don't think financial force is going away, but what Salesforce is doing, which is just the nature of things, you will see this is how Amazon is operated, for example, is that they allow sellers to sell products and then Amazon has visibility in which products sell well then they do their own private label products and they compete against those uh, sellers and end up overtaking those spaces. And it's just the natural progression of things. It's not necessarily evil or wrong. It's a company using the intelligence that they have because of where they sit and what they have access to. And they allow, quote unquote, the wisdom of crowds to determine what are the paths we need to go down. And so with this natural progression of how business works in general nowadays is that Salesforce is now over 20 years old. And so they've reached the, matur the maturity to expand into these specific industries to where you do now see uh, that Salesforce has consultants that have experience in all these different industries here. And they have made these specific industry cloud solutions that are specific to a certain vertical or industry. And why that's important is because over these past 20 years, Salesforce has witnessed their customers go out and implement thousands of financial services solutions or higher education or healthcare, for example. And they see some commonly recurring themes. And once you've seen thousands of a solution, you start to pick up, okay, out of these thousands of solutions, all, the vast majority have these features and functionality. What they do then is they create a cloud offering to make all that available out of the box. And that is a huge competitive advantage. So if I were a financial force, um, I would be looking to try to be acquired by Salesforce and they probably are. But a lot of these um, solutions that I've seen or I've been privy to being involved in, uh, like field service lightning, before that was a thing, I interviewed with a field service company that was hoping to be acquired by Salesforce. They were not. Salesforce acquired a different company and made that their field service cloud. This other company that I was interviewing with, uh, they still exist. They were acquired by IBM, but they're competing against Salesforce and Salesforce is going to win that battle. So I think that when you're looking at niching down into a specific industry to look at what are the solutions that Salesforce is creating. So, uh, 
so that gets us into some things around the financial services cloud. And let me close a few tabs here so I can declutter my workspace and find what I'm looking for. So the financial services cloud, I've got on my screen here, the financial services cloud administrator guide. There's a lot of resources when you're trying to niche down into specific vertical. There may not necessarily be a certification. That was part of Julie's question was what would be some other certifications that would make sense? I think that consultant certifications always make sense. There's not a certification for financial services cloud, but there is a super badge on Trailhead as well. And so let me give you some links here. So first of all, the one that's on the screen is this financial services administrator guide. I want to show you how these admin guides work as well, because there will be these admin guides or implementation guides for just about any vertical you can think of. It's just a matter of Googling and looking for it. So in the chat, I'm putting the link to this financial services cloud administrator guide. And this is the HTML version on my screen, but you can download a PDF and you click on that. It, in my case, it opens up in my browser and I can open an Acrobat as well, but they have a release uh, or an update to these, all these documents that they create every release of Salesforce. So this is the winter 21 release of the financial services cloud admin guide. Now, just know that there's corresponding admin or implementation guides for health cloud, higher education cloud, and you just got to Google it. Okay. There's, I don't know of a place that has a list of every single document that the documentation team keeps up with Salesforce, but these are, these tend to be pretty behemoth in nature, but there's some great information here. And some of the things that may be insightful for you to understand and why this is important since there is not a certification is that how do you get experience in financial service cloud without having a job in that space. Well, you can peruse the admin guide and learn about the data model, for example. And here's the data model for financial service cloud. And you see that there's this financial service cloud managed package. And so with these different cloud offerings, there's always, or typically there's always a managed package behind the scenes that you install in your org. And so what you can do to get hands-on experience is that you can spin up a free Salesforce account, either your existing one, like a free developer account, or just do a new one specific to whatever cloud you're wanting to learn about, because you will not mess up the data model, but you will fundamentally change the data model as you install the financial services cloud data model. And here's some other managed packages and diagrams. And I'll actually show you a few other things related to this. This link here is a link to where you can download the financial services cloud uh, package. And I'll put that in the chat next, which don't install this if you care about your org, okay? I'm warning you, it will mess up your data model. But uh, I've started the process, I'm not gonna complete it, but I've started the process of installing this in an org. I've got to click through to confirm, but if you've ever installed something off the app exchange, it's the same type of experience. And what I did was I just clicked on this link here, install the financial services cloud. And then there's also an extension for the financial services cloud. But the idea here is I wanted to show you all the changes that would be made to your org if you install this. There's all these new uh, custom fields. There's 580 custom fields that are installed and, on different objects. And then what else we got? Just scrolling through, there's some custom permissions, 64 custom metadata records, and 12 permission sets, 15 custom tabs, and 206 pages. There's lightning pages, R component bundles, and uh, Salesforce has done a lot of work on this, okay? So, and then 49 custom objects introduced as well. And this all has to do with functionality for financial services, validation rules, the list goes on and on and on and on. So the point of this though, is this is a way that you can get hands-on experience with financial services cloud. So that then when you're going on an interview, you can say, oh yeah, I've implemented financial service cloud. It was more for my own learning or for an app that I wanted to build for personal use or whatever it may be, but you could actually speak to the data model, how it changes when you install and a lot of the verbiage around that specific solution. So 
whatever your industry is, you can always look for an, what is known as an implementation guide or an admin guide. And usually you can find that and work through that. And there'll be links to install, to troubleshoot, data model diagrams, the whole nine yards. Now I did mention that there is a super badge. So I wanna show you a few things on Trailhead. This is a module for financial services cloud basics. Now, remember, this may not apply to your industry. So just think outside the box, if it's healthcare, higher education, whatever it may be, there's probably some Trailhead modules on this. And then as well, there is a financial services cloud specialist super badge. This takes approximately 10 hours, and this is the closest you'll come to getting a certification, at least for now. There may eventually be a financial service cloud consultant certification, but it wouldn't hurt for you to get this super badge because this would take you through all of these different prerequisites and it would give you a lot of hands-on experience. And then probably in here as well, it has you go through the process of installing the financial service cloud managed package into your trailhead org or one of your learning playgrounds, okay? So that is that. Let me put those links in the chat as well. So Julianne, when you asked your question, you probably didn't think I would talk this long about an answer, but I think just in general, you've got the, fi the financial force experience. So I think it's now time to pivot to financial service cloud so that you have more of a broad experience. You've got the experience with the specific app on app exchange. And so now focusing on Salesforce's own solution because that's where they're heading. That's where they're going to put their resources. And I think that's where the growth will be.